Hello my friends, Dr. Nicola here and this is Aspen Talks Health where we learn about alternative healing modalities and how to live life more compassionately and more loving to ourselves and healthy. So I am joined with Joanna Little. She is amazing. I'm so excited to have her on the show. She has a journey, a story that is just, you must hear it. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. Um, all right, so tell us, Tell us about your story. Mm. Ah, where to start? I know, right? It's a little <laughs> tough, but um, well, you had a brain aneurysm. I did. I had a ruptured brain aneurysm. So, like having a brain aneurysm, um, you can live your life. People discover they have them, and um, like it can be quite scary. Like if somebody finds out through a brain scan that they have a uh, brain aneurysm um, and mm. they feel like they have a ticking time bomb in their head and they never know what's going to happen. Um, luckily, I never knew I had one. So, okay, for, first explain what an aneurysm, what does that mean? Um, so basically you can have an aneurysm anywhere in the body um, and it's basically a, um, a weak uh, part of your artery wall and then the artery starts to balloon, so you end up with like a bubble on the side of your artery. And it grows and grows and grows, and under pressure, it can rupture. And when it ruptures, um, all the blood from your, from your arteries comes out. And so what happened was, and so I ended up with a, a full brain bleed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And the sensation you shared with me the other day, was it piercing pain or? Yeah, like I was, I was at a friend's house um, and I felt it pop um, and I felt this like wave come over my head and go down my body and I just knew like, oh my God, something really serious has happened and um, I kind of looked over at the sofa and I made my way to the sofa and I managed to get there and then like just screaming like pain like I'd never experienced before in my life and um, I was, was sick and um, my thermostat went, so I ended up like, you know, burning up, sweating, and I was like screaming, like, call my husband, basically. Wow. Yeah. All right, and then you end up, your husband happened to be with a brain surgeon. expert surgeon. Yeah, my husband was having dinner with a brain surgeon, just, I like, we, we, we both worked in the music industry. There was like, you know, we didn't hang out with brain surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> Right. So on the night that I had a ruptured brain aneurysm, my husband was having dinner with a brain surgeon because our, our cleaner son had a, um, a brain tumour. And so we were seeing if we could try and sort of like help him. And he kept saying all the way through dinner, if anybody ever has any problems with the brain, go to Cedars Sinai, it's the best place. Like, go to Cedars, go to Cedars. And so like that's all my husband got throughout dinner was like Cedars Sinai is the best place for the brain. And so he came home and got a phone call, um, and yeah, crazy, right? Wow. And uh, we were actually closer to Kaiser Permanente and had been to Kaiser before for like um, uh, uh, for an allergy thing for my husband. So we probably would have gone there had right. had he not have had this communication from from the guy that night that we should go to Cedars. So he took Amazing. me to Cedars. And then what happened? Um, and then, like, so the area of the brain where I had it um, is called the Circle of Willis. It's deep in the center of the brain, right behind the brain stem. It's an almost inoperable area of the brain. Um, and the guy that just happened to be on duty was one of very few surgeons who have ever operated on that area of the brain. Amazing. Um, so, yeah. Uh, some someone up there definitely guided that whole <laughs> situation, and yeah. So I, um, they went in. They thought I had cerebral meningitis. So they gave me antibiotics and a scan, and then um, then my husband was sat there, and someone came rushing in, screaming aneurysm, and then another doctor, another doctor, another doctor, until there was just like a ball of doctors with these two feet at the end of the bed, and my husband was taken away. Um, where he sat in the children's waiting room for seven hours. Oof. Um, yeah. And they operated and it was successful. They came back after seven hours and actually asked if he wanted to see a priest and gave him back my wedding ring. Wow. Yeah. 
But then what happened? How did it? So then, here. yeah. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> You're putting rings back on your fingers, though. Yeah, good. exactly. <laughs> So, mm -hmm. yeah, like, um, I was in a coma for six weeks. Wow. Um, the first three weeks it was touch and go. I had a lot of complications. I had a lot of strokes. It was in a very difficult um, place to get to. I was paralyzed down the right side of my body. And, um, yeah, it was like backwards and forwards. My heart collapsed. There was many touch and go moments where where we didn't think I was going to survive. Wow. Do you remember any of it or were you out cold for six weeks? Um, I have like uh, emotional memories of like feelings of things of where I was and how I felt and that I was enormous, like huge, huge, huge beyond belief and that there was just like a real sense of like love and uh, like I went somewhere beautiful. Wow. Like, something like I, when I woke up it was quite harrowing I was you know a lot of wires a lot of like um, a lot of distress and um, and I knew that I wherever I had been um, and it stuck with me for many years that I, I wanted to go back like I wanted wherever I was there was somewhere that I could go that it was um, peaceful, peaceful. It gave me a lot of like hope. I also didn't really understand time when I came back. When I came back, I was like a, you know, massively brain damaged, like a three-year-old. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what did you have to learn? So literally a three-year-old. So you had to learn how to walk, or uh, what were the? Yeah, I mean, like, like learning to walk like a child, hmm. learning to get dressed, um, just being able to kind of like compute things it was a left brain injury yeah. so like a lot of like logic language like I lost a lot of my vocabulary um, found it very hard to express myself um, with like if you ask me like I get stream of consciousness like I could talk about the most like random things or off cuff but um, if you ask me a specific question I couldn't quite grasp huh. what was going on Wow, fascinating, huh? What did you, uh, you're lucky you had your husband supporting you, first yes, of all. Yes, very, very much so. What a blessing. Yes. Uh, what did you turn to? How did you start to heal yourself? Um, I feel like, like my journey took me from my head to my heart. Hmm. Like, um, I, you know, my passion, like my passion to be alive and to kind of, um, I don't feel like I logically did stuff or kind of like I had rationale. I think it was more like I felt like I was in this warrior cry for about four years. I felt like I was just like screaming and running at life and in a in in like you know like the energy behind how I was you know I, I, I didn't swallow I had paralyzed vocal cords so they were like you need to do these exercises three times a day and I was like well what else am I going to do? So I would do them like, you know, 12 times a day. And, um, you know, I really sort of like, I've always been an on, on the job kind of person. So like I, I didn't uh, school, I went from, you know, like left school at 18 and went straight into the music industry and just learned on the job. Um, so I did much the same with my healing as well. Like I brought everything into like a kind of like creative play if you like, yeah. you know, like I um, really used, I think, I feel that um, really cooking was such a huge part. Yeah, I love, yeah. She made an amazing <laughs> soup for me, I'm so grateful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, um, I didn't really leave the house, I didn't, you know, I couldn't drive clearly, and, um, you know, I couldn't even make a cup of tea, like I couldn't, like, work out, like, I would put something on and then forget about something and not really know quite what I was doing or remember what I was meant to be doing. Wow. So it would take me a long time to do anything. Yeah. Um, my hand-eye coordination was very bad as well. Like you know, like a child would, you know, reaches for something and 
misses things. Like I just didn't really have like uh, control over my body. I didn't have, um, yeah, I didn't really have like felt like if you can imagine, I was like there was a little bit of me inside, and like all the little pulley strings. I had to like like a puppet. <laughs> I, like I had this idea and this vision in my head, like that I was the puppeteer and that this was my puppet and I was trying to kind of like maneuver this like this sort of like flesh puppet of mine. Wow. Yeah. That makes so much sense because we move now automatically. Like yes. My hand moves without me really thinking of <laughs> doing this. Yes. But yeah, if you don't have that linked up yet, yes. you are kind of just literally deliberately moving these parts. Yes. Wild. Yeah. So it was and so I had this vision for quite some time that this was my puppet because I couldn't um, like articulate myself the way I wanted to or maneuver myself the way I wanted to and I referred to myself as Joanna, like third person, like Joanna needs to because it was like I was like maneuvering this, this, this thing, this puppet of mine and I have to get my puppet to, to be back in the world again. Wow. What other healing techniques did you bring in? You say the cooking, that's so important. I think yes. nutrition, by the way, is so paramount. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, what, for sure. The phytochemicals and all the vitamins and minerals that have in fruits and vegetables, that helps your body heal every cell. Absolutely. And you needed that especially for your brain, obviously. Yes, yeah. And yeah. so, like, also bringing in the fats. Mm -hmm. You know, like the fats have been a great stabilizer for me and it's been really good for me. Like, uh, at first the doctors were like, oh, you need a lot of sugar, right? So, because your brain works on sugar. Yeah. Um, and actually I found sugar has been really detrimental to me, Interesting. both to my gut and my brain. Um, and I'm happy to be like, you know, investigating constantly and like never just taking um, on face value, like the information that was given to me, Smart. like always, like well, uh, you know, well, what else? And always experimenting and noting how things make me felt, how, how things make me feel, and um, yeah, like definitely cooking was a, was a huge part of it. Um, I would say um, as an energy, yeah, um, creativity has been like the most powerful um, force for me in, in my journey. It's been like the thing that has ignited me and um, uh, kept me curious and kept me motivated. I did a lot of like art therapy and mm. like would, um, I drew mandalas and it was like, also like when I first started I was given, uh, when I first came out of hospital I was given a colouring book huh. um, and I started with this colouring book and I was shocked. I was like, uh, the first one I did, I was like, oh my god, I, I, I looked at it afterwards and I was like, I'm not, in, I'm not even in the lines. Huh. I'm like, I looked at it and it looked like a child had done it. And wow. it was, yeah. It was like there was a few things where I thought I was okay yeah. and then I would do something and I would look at it and I'd be like, oh dear. <laughs> not okay. Not okay. <laughs> oh, like, poor thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. wow. Yeah, so I started using, I started um, drawing mandalas and using it to like rewire my brain, my hand eye coordination detail, using my eyes to really focus on things. My eyes would shake in my head a lot. Hmm. Um, I don't know whether it's a trauma response or a brain thing, um, but if I would look at things, sometimes my eyes would shake. And my, I mean, I would, I had a lot of like uh, sh shaky things go on with my body, like throughout, um, especially the first six months. Um, I would be twitching and shaking a lot. Really? Yeah, fascinating. I yeah. wonder what that is. I wonder what it is too. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm deeply curious about like the brain. I think that we understand parts of it, but I think that there's like a huge amount that we don't. Yeah. Really not. Oh yeah, it, it just it, it's sensing abilities. Yes. Or 
you know, the simplest one is knowing, uh, thinking of a friend of mine in Hong Kong who I haven't talked to in six months and within an hour he calls. Yeah. It's like, how does that happen? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but I think our brains are way more capable than we yeah. give them credit for. Yeah, and I also don't see, like, the thing that um, has made me realize is that the brain isn't just this thing that's like, you know, neck upwards. Yeah. Like, I really see, like, you know, like the, the, when I try to apply myself, like, you know, like the left brain, like part of it, logical, you know, like organizational, it was just like impossible, like this isn't happening. Hmm. You know, like I can't work out like instructions, like, you know, trying to use my mobile phone or trying to like, you know, like connect my computer to a speaker it was like, took me like a good 18 months before I could try and work out like, how to get music to play from this thing out in the world. So it's like, yeah. Wow. The computer was the last like frontier for me. That was like, it took me a good, yeah. It took me a good five years to really like get to use my computer again. Wow. It's almost like a high speed evolution of the human race for the last like, yeah. 50 years. You had to catch up all of a sudden. Yeah, totally. I mean, Wild. it was like, uh, everything went analog. <laughs> yeah, dial up. <laughs> exactly. Where's my floppy? Yeah. <laughs> so cute. Um, okay, but you you tapped yes. on something. I think there are three brains, right? This is what their consciousness is exactly. saying. And they do the heart brain and the gut brain. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And so like I really feel like um, when like when I woke up from from my coma, um, I, I I didn't know where I was. And, um, and I thought I had to escape from hospital and I had this like... <laughs> Probably a good idea actually, but no. <laughs> I gotta get out of here, this is, like, this is not where I want to be. Um, and like I, my passion and my driving force, like my courage, which is of the heart, mm. was the thing that really drove me forward. It was like I, um, like, like I said, I ran, ran at life like a warrior. Like, I, just didn't, I never, never, never gave up. And um, I just like, I have lots of signs, as you know, in my house, I still, they've evolved over the years. Um, but you know, it would, you know, just signs I would have in my house, never give up, you know, and just, you know, just reminding me that just to keep going and to keep trying and it's, it's, it's gonna happen. And you know, I, I, I've spoken to people who have had brain injuries since then and it's scary at the beginning, but the brain does heal. Mm. It is amazing. It's like given the right support, the right encouragement, the right environment, patience, love, self-compassion, like all those things, like it's, it's unreal um, and almost unbelievable what we can achieve. So, so true. Yeah. I love all your signs. I think that's a really good tool. You have some beautiful ones, all just literally just um, pieces of paper with, with these beautiful messages taped all around our kitchen. Uh, what's your favorite one? Um, the moment, it's, uh, it's a compassionate negotiation to discipline the ego. It's a compassionate negotiation to discipline the ego. Yeah, explain I mean, it please because yeah. I love it that, it's so funny that that's your favorite because that's the one that caught my attention remember yeah. I was like I like this one what's going on there yeah and because it's a random one it doesn't like it's not like it was just something that um, I was being uh, quite harsh I was being quite judgmental um, with myself I wake up at five yeah exactly my specialty oh, yeah <laughs> um, you know I wake up at 5am with my husband we do our morning routine and um, uh, like it's it's like a, it's a long process, it's like two and a half hours, and um, you know, and then I go and exercise, and you know, like it's it's it, it's a big process, and right. sometimes I don't always achieve it, and um, and then sometimes also when I'm overdoing it, like I'm maybe like not getting up at five a.m. I'm getting up at six thirty, and um, and then I. Feel like I'm, I've done like I'm not doing right, or I'm not doing good enough, or I'm right. not, I'm not doing enough, and so then I get hard on myself, and I come from this militant place, like 
oh, I've got to do this, I've got to get up, I've got to do, you know, my meditation, I've got to do my breathing exercises, then I've got to do my, like, physical therapy, then I've got to do my walk the dog, then I've got to have, you know, like, all of these things. And when I'm not achieving them all, then I can sometimes be um, hard on myself. Yeah. Um, and then also when I then get um, tired sometimes, um, then when I'm like, oh, but it's okay, it's okay. And it's like, well, both of them, yes. Like, first of all, like, you don't have to run your life like militant all the time and be this like aggressor to yourself. You can have compassion and be gentle and let yourself have like an off day. Yeah. But then also be aware when you're having those like off days when you're like maybe like lulling um, and you need to pick it back up again. So it's neither one nor the other. You shouldn't always just be like, oh, it's okay, I'm tired, I'm allowed to have this lay in. It's like really, it's a negotiation. Like, is this really truthfully? Yeah. Uh, do you need a lay in? Or can we have like half an hour lay in, mm -hmm. still get this done, still feel good, and then or actually I are you do you need to lay in or do you need to just suck it up and get on with it? Yeah. So it's like it's neither one nor the other. It's not like oh you should always forgive yourself and be kind to yourself and like yes, always be kind to yourself, but like you shouldn't like let these things run away right. with you and then like maybe not Yeah progress yeah it's whether or not you need to honor your body and if you really need rest then pushing yourself to get to spin class for example is, is maybe not the healthiest thing for yeah. you yeah um, however if you're just a little lazy <laughs> exactly. and you need a little push so I think it's just checking in with yourself right what do I exactly. really need here yeah. what's what's that play yeah it's the negotiation love it you know so it's like that's been I've been playing with that for a while and it's been really like allowing me to see more because as opposed to like um, everything being black and white mm -hmm. there's a dialogue that goes on and then I get to learn more about what I need what I want what's what's right for me in that moment yeah beautiful yeah what other healing modalities you told me that you started doing uh, cranial sacral yes cranial sacral has been for what? sure one of the most incredibly powerful parts of my journey really uh, yes. can you explain it because i never really understood that they're trying to move the plates that's on my head um that's what, <laughs> like what does that mean <laughs> <laughs> so we we have like you know like tectonic plates like if you like we have like um like many different bones that make up the skull and they they had the idea that, that they were all fused and that when we when we're born um, they move like, to allow you through the birth canal mm -hmm. and then they all fuse but now they actually realize that there are these like microscopic movements that happen um, and that actually like um, at times like the fascia can get quite tight like we all know what it's like when we get a tight muscle yeah or and you know like so we our um our brain and our spinal cord our central nervous system is encapsulated in a um in a sac if you like the blood brain the blood brain barrier like yeah. the uh, the meninges you've had a meningitis yes and so like as that gets um Tight, like a muscle would get tight yeah. it like restricts the movement and the flow of this like uh, rhythm so you have like your breathing rhythm and out and you have your circulatory rhythm your blood rhythm that's pumped by your heart and then we have this other rhythm hmm. which is our um, cerebral spinal rhythm our, our cranial sacral rhythm and so um, the, the thing that I really like about cranial sacral um, therapy is that it's not really something that where somebody wants to come and try and maneuver your bones and crack you into place or do anything to you. Yeah. It's more of a being with you and um, honoring and trusting that your body is this, there's infinite intelligent wisdom and that um, by them like opening up and creating a safe space for you and helping you to align your body, your like balancing your head and your pelvis, like helping you to open up and being there with you mm. like a like a protector, a space holder, 
that they can honour your innate intelligence and help invite in the innate intelligence of the one that we are all with. And that we will help resource ourselves. So it's like it's 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 almost like being with somebody and helping them to discover their own resource and they will um, uh, reorientate themselves um, to get what they need. So it's trusting the process. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so it's not moving around. I always thought it was kind of like moving around with things, but it's not. It, 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 I mean, it's yes. more energetic. You are, and, you are, I mean, so the, um, I studied with this incredible guy called um, Gary Strauss at okay. the Life, Life Energy Institute. And he does like a mixture of um, up ledger, which is like, um, sorry, <laughs> so <enjoy. yummy. laughs> um, which is more like anatomical, hmm. more like, yes, like um, small manipulations, whether it be like compression or expansion of like some of these, like giving it more space and like physical, um, like physical move, moving the body around. Okay. Um, and also like more of a kind of, um, energetic in the field, sort of biodynamic side of things as well. So. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Any other healing modalities? I see you have some. You've created. First of all, she's created this space here that I'll show you around in a minute. But um, it's magical, and it has a view of all of Los Angeles. It's and on the Hollywood Hills, it's stunning. Um, but you have singing bowls over there and tuning yes. forks. Yes. How has sound healing helped you? Yes. So um, the. The guy that looked after me when I came out of hospital was actually my neighbor. Um, he was in his mid 70s and he and his mum used to practice Qigong, like she was in her 90s. And um, like he also did uh, a lot of like shiatsu and um, like macrobiotic cooking. He taught me a lot okay. and he brought me this singing bowl. And I was just like a child, I was just like, fascinated by this thing, like, oh, like playing with it, yeah. um, and I just was just like, this is, and he would actually like put it on my head, and like, you know, like, ding, and I'd be like, oh my god, this is amazing, <laughs> and I would put it on my body, and just play it on my body, on myself, mm. and um, being in music before, I was like, oh, you know what, this is like, it, this resonates with me, Yeah, and um, I started learning um, something called human tuning, which is um, like the tuning forks, yes. placing the tuning forks in and around the body. Okay. Um, and what it is is like the, that uh, entrainment. So like like instruments get knocked, they get banged. You know, like you travel with a guitar, and it's like the strings get a little bit loose, and it's like how do we bring this um, instrument of ours back into resonance again? So how do we use like sound, vibration, and this like deep relaxation and honoring space that's created to kind of help people to resonate again, whether it be like, I put the sound bowls on the body, I have a huge sound bowl that um, sometimes like when, I'm, when I do small events, like I have people stand in it, um, really? Just, yeah. I'll, which I, I will. Ha ha ha! I'm getting that next. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a little wow. experience before you leave. Cool. Um, and I started really just playing, like like creativity. Everything became because I was like a child. I did when I came out. I was like a, you know, three year old when I came out of hospital. I was like just playing with things, playing with food, playing with life, like I, you know, like thank God for my dogs, like, you know, Aww. just like, like lie on my bed and just like really just started doing art, painting, like making cooking as a really like, as a creative task and mm. being playfulness with everything. Um, and I think that, that that really helped me to sort of like cultivate what I have now, which I'm so grateful for. Love it. Yeah. So, uh, two more questions. First, yes. what is the first step? If someone ha suffers from a brain injury, what would you suggest the first step they do? Um, sleep. Really? Just honor that you need sleep? Just rest. Huh. Like, I, you know, I definitely think that um, uh, your diet is for sure uh, one of the most important parts. Good. 
Um, I had paralyzed vocal cords for four months, so um, I didn't actually eat. Um, I was eating through a, a tube, yeah. a, a peg in my tummy, and they were feeding me like you know, like these. And I just remember like saying to my husband, like, "What's in this thing?" And it was like, you know, high fructose corn syrup and oh. like oil, basically. And so I was making him go and get me. Um, uh, juice, juices, juices. Because I was like at the time I was feeding through uh, tube in my nose, wow. and so he would come to the hospital with these like um, juices and like feed me juice. Love it. Um, and I went down to like seventy pounds, and I was like said to the guy like, "Can I do a juice fast?" And he was like, "I don't think so." <laughs> <laughs> and I honestly have got to say like you know like we, you know. We sort of like if I'm if I'm in a car accident, I'm not going to the Buddhist center. I'm going to the hospital, mm. and I am so grateful for everything, like the operations that I had, you know, the brain surgeries that I had, you know, all of the things that the doctors did for me. I wouldn't be here without. So I really am in so much gratitude for the technology of Western medicine, and I do not, under any circumstance, think that I would still be here without it. And we all have a responsibility to look after ourselves. Yeah. So, yes, food has been a huge part of that for me. It's been a huge part of not just my creativity, but regenerating my brain. It gives me vitality. I note my diet. I know when I change my diet, I see the difference in myself. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm still very mindful of how I eat. And still, um, I, I facilitate cleanses. That's a big part of um, what I do now. And one thing that I teach people is about cycles. It's about like you know, you, you, when I came, I lived at Optum Health Institute in San Diego, and um, I was raw vegan for three and a half years. And I would, I would say, I, I maybe over cleansed. Um, I stripped myself down a little bit like, too much mm. um, when I was maybe in regeneration mode. So like honoring and knowing like where am I in my cycle? Am I in the building mode? Am I in the growing mode? Do I need do I need to take in? Am I am I in like the letting go mode? Like where am I in the cycle and just getting people to understand that like you know, nature is not, you know, it doesn't find like the perfect, like, uh, the perfect temperature and stay there. You yeah, know. And it, exactly. It adjusts and it keeps my life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It goes through seasons and cycles and rhythms and so do we. Like, we're not going to find the perfect diet and stay to it. Like, oh my God, if I wake up and I have this, followed by this, Followed by this is the perfect diet, and I'm going to stay like this forever because we move, we yeah. change, our environment changes, adaptability and flexibility, and like aware self awareness is so important. Yeah, yeah, and checking in. How does this make me feel? Exactly. And honoring it. I think uh, the recent lesson for me is actually listening to my body when I hear that it's full or. I shouldn't eat that, and then another part of me goes, just do it. Yeah. You know, and just maybe exactly. paying attention to the, I shouldn't, uh, you know, that's not what I need right now. Yeah. And l just listening more. Yeah. It's my, uh, yeah. my latest lesson. Um, what do you offer, and how can people find you? Oh, so, um, I work both in groups and one on ones. Um, I love, you know, co creating, like, a collaboration with one person and taking them through a journey and investigating you know what's going on for them and helping them not just with their diet but also on the table body work sessions um, and helping them to kind of like evolve and unlock and really go through their cycles yeah um, and then I do workshops group workshops which is I feel one of the most powerful ways to cleanse mm. um, because yeah. You know, we're very social beings. Like eating is a is, is part of our like um, social structure. Yeah. Like we we meet to eat, and um, so I bring people together so that we can create community around cleansing. And uh, it's not just the the enteric nervous system, 
it is the somatic nervous system. I teach Qigong um, and like a lot of like presencing somatic exercises and um, and central nervous system. So I help people work through those three things through um, these small. They're like sometimes I do a week long. Sometimes it's four nights, three days. Okay. And gather like I'm getting. I'm doing a woman's cleanse next week, which I'm really excited. Nice. Yeah. So the the groups are, are a wonderful way to really come together to learn more about yourself, to have that support to let go and really like change, make small um, adjustments to your life coordinates, Love it. so that you can head off in a new direction. Love it. That's true. Anytime I've done a cleanse, I've done them by myself. It's much harder. Yes. If for some reason, if you're in a group of people, 20 people all doing a green juice, for example, cleanse, yeah. easy, no problem, not hungry. Yeah. Yes, I, I, the cleanses that I do are generally, um, I take people down and back up again. Mm. So like what I see a lot with people, especially with the juice cleansing, is people, I'm going to do a five day juice cleanse, and they like do it, and then they're like, just got to get through these five days, and they're like holding on to the end. So, so they can kind of, and that does that doesn't feel like letting go to me. That feels like holding on. Yeah, makes and, sense. And and it also feels more like people are like, right, I'm just going to do it. So it's like jumping off the cliff into the water to like fight your way back onto like through the choppy waters back onto the beach again, and then be like, oh, I did it, I did it, you know. And and I like to think of like you know going down to the beach, taking taking off getting into the water, walking into the water, coming buoyant, and then walking back out again. Hmm. So, yeah, so it always starts with wonderful, nutritious food, um, bringing down, stabilizing people's blood sugar levels with nice, healthy fats, and it'll go down to empty. And while you're empty in like the liquid um, day, which is like nut milks, broths, juices, and elixirs, People have that kind of that silence in their body so that they're willing to kind of like see what are their triggers, what are the things, they can receive more information. And then I feel people back up again. So people always then receive more food, more creativity, there's exercises and people go back out into the world full and uh, ready to think, oh, I know, now I know where, where I'm gonna go, what's next, wow. Yeah, that sounds like a delightful journey. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Okay, so how can people find you? Do you have a website? I or? do have a website. Please. It's uh, creativecleansing.com. Creativecleansing.com. Yes. And she's here based in LA. We're going to have Joanna over to Aspen and we're going to do an event there as well. Yes. I can't wait. I love that. Um, any final thoughts that you'd like to share? Love yourself every single part of you and always believe that you have an influence in your own life and that you have the possibility to make a difference, get better, get stronger and love yourself. Yeah. Mm. Love yourself. So true. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Joanna. Such a blessing. Oh, yay. Oh, what a treat. Mm -hmm. So good to meet you. You as well. Uh, I knew it from the first second. She's fabulous. All right, you all. Thank you very much for tuning in, and I will. Oh, I will show you the space on Instagram. Thanks.